Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're looking at the 2015 Lincoln Navigator full-size luxury SUV. This is a class that has very few competitors these days. We've got the Cadillac Escalade, the GMC Yukon Denali, and the Infiniti QX80, just to name a few. For 2015, Lincoln gave it an all-new face, a number of new features inside, and most importantly, that new EcoBoost V6. So let's have a look. The 2015 Lincoln Navigator received a mild facelift for the 2015 model year, sporting likely the most handsome version of the brand's dual-wing grille design yet. It's framed by new HID projector headlights with LED signature bars. There's also LED driving lights down below. The rear power liftgate gets a less intensive rework with an all-new taillight panel that looks pasted on at best, but improves the look over the previous model. A single-tip exhaust pipe bucks the modern trend of dual exhaust tips. As ours was fully loaded with a reserve package, it featured smartly designed 22-inch polished aluminum wheels. 20-inch wheels come standard. Also, there's power folding side mirrors that, while nice, look like they belong on an F-150 with their cheap black plastic finish. Outside the new face and taillights, the greenhouse design of the doors and side glass actually dates back to 2003, looking pretty dated among its peers who have seen several redesigns since then. Its automatic power running boards were a feature that seemed slick at first, but in our week with the Navigator they proved difficult to live with. When extended they stick out quite a bit, which is fine for entry, but for exiting they prove clumsy. It's easy to scrape your nice shoes or boots on them as they have to be stepped on or around, and our shins often hit them painfully while standing close and reaching in to grab personal items. Luckily, they can be turned off. Inside, the reserve package brought a number of features including the top grain premium leather seating surfaces, genuine zero coat wood trims, heated and ventilated front and heated rear seats. The dash is wrapped in soft stitch trims this year which brings a new look for a sense of luxury. A newly designed center stack has the My Lincoln Touch infotainment and driver interface which is essentially My Ford Touch called My Lincoln Touch. It's just as frustrating and annoying to use here as in a Ford Fusion. Luckily they added redundant knobs and buttons below it for most commonly used controls. Speaking of the Ford Fusion, that's exactly where it seems the new dual screen digital instrument cluster came from. While offering a good deal of helpful and customizable information while on the go, it's clearly grabbed from the parts bin. In fact, instead of designing its own housing, they just created this sort of transition piece from the square opening of the navigator's dash to the more rounded trapezoidal shape of the passenger car instrument cluster. Also from the parts bin is the somewhat cheap feeling steering wheel push buttons and console shifter which are virtually identical to those found in the base grade F-150s. Door switch panels also match that of Ford passenger cars from a decade ago. We hand it to Lincoln for using genuine wood trims here and you can tell they're real as they don't match in color or finish from one panel to the next. Running your finger along the joints reveals sharp and roughly finished edges. Fake wood rarely does that. Missing I felt at $73,000 plus was a sunroof and the latest driver assistance features like radar cruise control and lane keeping. In all, the fit and finish here, the inconsistent material quality and the parts bin nature of the cabin is really quite disappointing in this price range. At least it's practical. Rear seat space is generous with its manually folding captain's chairs and they do adjust. The third row seats are power folding in a 60-40 split and all of them can be folded down for a virtually flat cargo floor in pretty short order. Under the hood is where you really find something new, a 380 horsepower twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6. Made into a 6-speed automatic transmission, it delivers an impressive 460 pound-feet of torque. This helps it achieve a top-of-class tow rating of 9,000 pounds for the two-wheel drive and 8,600 pounds for the all-wheel drive model. I have to hand it to Lincoln and Ford. It was a good thing putting this EcoBoost engine in this vehicle. It gives it a nice kick, much faster than the old V8 was, and this transmission does a pretty good job of putting that power down. The only drawback with it is, it doesn't sound like a V8. It sounds like a rental car, and that's too bad because the Taurus SHO, they put a nice sound tube in that that really pipes in a pretty nice sporty sound. That'd be cool if they put that here too. 
While it has good power, it remains as thirsty as its competitors with V8 engines. The EPA rates our all-wheel drive tester at 15 MPG City, 20 MPG Highway with a 17 MPG combined rating. And 17 MPG is exactly what we achieved in our week of testing. This chassis actually has been around for some time. Its latest generation was engineered for the 2008 model year. Now in this class, it's got the specs. It's got an independent rear suspension. The Cadillac Escalade and the GMC Yukon don't have that. So it's got a lot of bits that should make it one of the best. In terms of refinement and the overall ride, I find that it actually it does keep up with the times. Now this has the adjustable suspension with the reserve package, which is the Lincoln Drive Control. It's got three settings, comfort, which is like a waterbed. Then it has normal, which is like an air mattress. Then it has sport, which is really the closest thing to what you'd expect in a normal everyday vehicle these days in terms of body control. Any of those other two settings really are going to give you this really floaty bouncy ride that really takes you back to a 1978 town car. The all-wheel drive system of the Navigator is geared towards light duty use such as slippery roads in the winter, muddy dirt roads in the rain, and perhaps a slick boat ramp. Thus, it doesn't offer the low range or extensive manual controls for heavy duty off-roading. The ride in this is actually very quiet. That's one thing I have to hand it for a large vehicle with very large tires and wheels on it. The road noise and the tire noise is at a very low minimum. Um, now this greenhouse, this structure on this with the doors, the windows and the glass is showing its age in that you do get a little bit more wind noise in this than you might expect. Rounding it up for the Lincoln Navigator, I have to be honest with you folks, I really had hoped that Ford and Lincoln had spent a little bit more time and money really making this update special. This is a vehicle that's been with us for a long time and, well, a little bit more in terms of freshening on this style would have really gone a long way. Now the truth be told is this model is only going to be with us this year and next year. The rumor is in 2017 an all new one will be coming out and possibly even made out of aluminum. That'll be pretty special. So that really makes Makes this a stopgap vehicle for the interim but the problem is at this price that's a lot of money for a stopgap especially when you consider the competition that's out there the rest of the specs here power fuel economy right in line with the competition um, now as we look at the stars we talked about most of these areas it just this vehicle is really starting to show its age in every measure. It is not really competitive, and that's, I think, being pretty nice about it. So this week it gets two and a half out of five stars. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.